God be the glory and praise. I would like to share to each and everyone uh, the dream that I had March the 4th. And in this dream, I was looking, I was in this house where like a living room, but the wall is made of glass. And I was looking outside and I saw, um, you know, with, with few people and I saw this cat walking strange. This cat is, you know, wearing uh, shoes or sandals and walking strangely and approaching another cat. And so in my mind, I was thinking something's wrong. Something's different with this cat. Something's wrong with this cat. So what I did was I actually pointed my hand to the cat and started to pray. I started to pray over this cat and then I don't know what had happened, but he felt the prayer. So what happened was as I was praying to this cat, she or he immediately, you know, it immediately turned to me. This cat immediately turned to me and turns to be not a cat anymore, but like a big fox or big dog, huge, that the mouth was widely open, ready to attack me and swallow me, like swallow me as a whole, you know, uh, swallow me, <laughs> swallow me. So the, the mouth and the face was like in front of my face. So what happened is he's trying to, you know, he... I know it's Satan, represents Satan. He's trying to um, to intimidate me or scare me. But instead of me being scared, I was actually just uh, not scared at all. I was just like, continue to pray over that cat. And then all of a sudden, I knew it's the power of Jesus Christ. The power of the prayer and the power of Jesus Christ that... Oh, yeah, that everything was possible. So I was praying over this and then I grab, I grab this dog, huge dog. Then I break, I don't know, that was so strong, right? I actually like break the neck apart and then just pull the skin out. You know, I know it, this huge dog is really huge, but I know the strength was given to me by the Lord just to grab and fight against it and tear it apart and just break the neck. And I can hear people screaming like, you know, smash it and break it. So it's like saying, you know, when we pray over the devil, that we cast them out and throw them in the pits of hell in the name of Jesus Christ, we're not going to, to look back. We really have to command them to get out in the name of Jesus Christ. So we really have to smash them and break them and throw them into the pits of hell where they belong. And that's what had happened in my dream. I smash it and it was gone. And then suddenly, I, you know, after I smash it, I went to the refrigerator and washed my hands. I, I don't know why in the fridge, but I wash my hands there, signifying that I'm cleansing, cleansing my hand, you know, and removing the blood of the devil that I just mashed and killed. And I know the Lord is the living water. So when you see the flowing water, I know it's the living water of the Lord cleansing me. And I know he's the one giving me the strength and his power through his name and his word. And so after that, immediately, I was, because I was inside this house and I knew I was inside the house of my, my parents, which is made of wood, suddenly I felt like a strong shaking inside the house, like a, a very strong earthquake. And then as I felt this earthquake, I, it seems like, you know, I can feel because it's wood. It seems like the house is going to be pulled and uprooted down, the, you know, from the ground. And you know that it's really shaking so bad. And then all of a sudden, I, I, because I know, I know that anytime, according to the Lord's hands, you know, if it's God's will that is going to take us um, in a tornado or whatever, I know that it's in God's will, right? So that particular moment i told my family let's hold hands i told my mom and my dad and there's a, a small kid in there i said let's hold hands and pray the lord's prayer 
And then we started to pray the Lord's Prayer. And then all of a sudden, the shaking stopped. But then my mom was pointing to me, a tornado, a tornado uh, so huge, but then it's tornado with fire. So it's not just simply tornado with air, but it also contains fire. And it's approaching to the house. And I know that if it will reach the house, we will really be blown away. And that's probably why the house is shaking. So I just pointed at the tornado and then after i pointed at the tornado in the name of jesus the tornado just vanished and that's the power of the lord i know it's the power of the lord and i truly believe why because it's written in the bible so why is the cat walking strange among other cats if you try to think about it let's look at this in two ways a devil can actually infiltrate animals. They can go because they're, uh, you know, because they're entities. They can go into animals and spy on people. That's why when you see vampire movie, they're using dogs. And you probably see my, uh, my video, my very, very first video. I have like 200 plus, I guess. The very first video I had when I was young. I saw a vampire with a dog and with red eyes. My dad even thought I'm getting crazy until, until my neighbors who were army, they actually fired their gun and my dad were, were living on top of the hill. And then my dad asked them what's going on. And then we found out that they were telling my dad they saw the guy exactly the description I saw with the dog and turned into a dog and a small animal and then it run. So it's not only me, there's five or so people, more or less 10 people that saw it to, to you know, how do you call this? To prove that I'm not lying at my dad. And then my dad looked at me and he said, yes, it's true. They saw what you saw. And so this is just trying to tell us that they can go into animals. So, you know, uh, Satan is actually trying to copycat, trying to follow what God is doing. If God created heaven and earth and created mankind, he's creating... Uh, reptilian whatever robots or whatever to to do what the lord is doing which he knows he can't and so it's not impossible that they can use animals to to do their schemes and at the same time the second the second thought to this is second is it also signifies or probably tell us that you know, if you try to look at this cat as human being, if it represents humans, we can see that there's actually demon walking around right now with us pure human. Why did I say that? You know what? If you look at uh, the, uh, I, I didn't actually check it, but there's part of the Bible that says that at the end times, during, it will be just like the time of Noah. Remember, during the time of Noah, they're the only few real human left during those times. And so, this is what's going on. We are actually living on earth right now. And there's a lot of people that are actually probably like hybrid of uh, fallen angels. Or they could even be uh, a false human. We don't know. And that's how can we discern them? With the blessing and grace of God, we will be able to know them. Go to Proverbs 2 verse 6. The Lord said, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity or righteousness. So, the Lord will give us wisdom. Wisdom to discern the righteous and the unrighteous one. And see, because of this gift of wisdom and understanding, 
we are able to detect Satan's scheme. You know, it's not just in the animals, but also people that are surrounding us, whether in school, whether at work, whether at store, whether in the restaurant, and even in the church. You will be able to discern, to detect who are truly the Lord's and who are not. They will be, they are those uh, facts in a sheep clothing, something like that. So the Lord warned us in Matthew 7 verse 16, Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. You know, most of the time, it's really, really hard to listen to, you know, to detect who are the people you need to listen to, especially in YouTube. And I give the glory and praise to God. And that's the reason why I don't want to, to publish my name because this is not me. I'm actually just the servant of the Lord to share what the Lord is sharing to me. And I, I told him before in one of my dreams when I saw him, I said, Lord Jesus, they won't listen to me. But then he told me, tell them it's up to their hands if they will listen or not. And that's what I'm doing right now. I want to be obedient to the Lord. And so there's a lot that are actually doing the gospel with a corresponding payment. Oh, you need to give this certain amount, give this certain amount because we're doing this. Or even in the church, you will think that they're preaching the words of God because they're pastors. But they are convincing their people to give more donations to the church so they can buy a jet plane. They can buy a new mansion house. They can buy expensive cars and expensive watches and jewelries. Why are they building the treasures here on earth? If they do that, try to think if your pastor is doing that. Try to think. Are they really walking with the words of God? If they truly believe in the Lord and live according to the words of God, then they should do what the Lord wants them to do and don't do what the Lord don't want them to do, right? The Lord said, whatever you do to the least of my brother is what you do unto me. And the Lord told, uh, told us in a certain part of the Bible that said, did you feed me when I'm hungry? Did you give me clothes when I don't have clothes to wear? Something like that. Did you visit me when I'm sick? And if this head of the churches are actually just building their gold and silver, therefore, they're not serving the Lord. They're serving another God who is a false God. You can see them according to their fruits. There's a lot of people who are really servant of the Lord and who are really blessed to have money for them to perform the will of God. But you don't see them extravagant. You see them so simple and humble and living the life that the Lord wants them to do. And so we have to be careful, brothers and sisters. And that's why whenever you doubt, pray to God and ask the Lord to show you the truth. Because the Lord will truly show you the color of these people. And the Lord showed that to me when I was listening to one of the guy in YouTube. And when I had a dream several days after, the Lord showed me, you know, he's not. And so, why, are, why am I casting out the demon cat? Are we able to do it? Basing on this dream? When you go to John 14 verse 12, the Lord said, Truly, truly, I tell you, 
Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I am doing. He will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. Praise be to God. So the Lord's words are true and alive. The Lord is so faithful to His words. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So therefore, the word of the Lord is true and alive. So therefore, if the Lord said that whoever believes in Him, Jesus Christ, will also do the work that the Lord did, and even more than the even greater things than this, than what he did while he was walking on earth. So what did the Lord did when he was walking on earth? He actually calms the sea. You know, he commanded the sea to get calm. He commanded the weather to stop when they were at the boat. He heals the sick. He actually raised the dead up. Right? He heals the, the lepers. Uh, he, he actually cast the devil. He cast the devil out from those people who were possessed. He did a lot of things. And Jesus clearly stated that we can do this in his name. So that's not impossible, brothers. When I casted the demon out of that cat and I I commanded the tornado with fire to stop in Jesus' name. It's not me, but the power of the name of Jesus and his words, it will happen. It will be possible that we can cast them out and command the weather to stop in Jesus' Yeshua's name. And so the Lord commanded the apostles in Mark 3 verse 15. He appointed the 12 of them whom he designated as apostles to accompany him, to be sent out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. So see, he commanded them to do the things that he did. So we are the disciples of Christ. And since we upset, accepted Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, it's no longer us. The Lord gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. That's why we have to constantly fill ourselves with the words of God, continually pray, continually fast if we need to, and continually sing hymns for the Lord. And you know, nothing is impossible if you call upon the name of the Lord. So, uh, brothers and sisters, are they the only one who can do it in Jesus' name? Just like what I said earlier, no. It includes all those who believe and accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior and continually walk in righteousness and fill themselves with the Holy Spirit. So in Mark 9, verse 38, the Lord said, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone, we saw someone else driving out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he does not accompany us. But Jesus replied, Do not stop him. No one performs a miracle in my name can turn around and speak evil of me. See? During this time, the apostles were thinking they were the only chosen one to cast out demons. So they complained to Jesus. But what did Jesus say? No, don't stop them. Because they, if they can do it, believing in Jesus' name, it means they are with Jesus. They have their own, you know, they're doing their thing. But they believe in Jesus and using the name of Jesus to perform what needs to be done to heal the sick, to preach the words of God so that the blind can see, not just physically, but it includes physically and spiritual blindness to open up. So praise be to God, brothers and sisters, we need to use that gift. The Lord called us to be a worker in His vineyard. So we should be spreading out 
to do the works that the Lord wants us to do according to His will. Because right at this moment, brothers and sisters, the Lord is gathering His children. And that's why He's using His disciples, all those who believe in Him, to use the, the gifts that the Lord gave us to do what needs to be done before He comes. So to complete the work God has given us to do, we must discern and resist Satan's many schemes. You know, right now, brothers and sisters, <laughs> Satan targets leaders with his schemes of intrigue and other stuff. When you read the book of Nehemiah number 6, you know, Nehemiah was actually invited several times. Because these people who are inviting him, they want to bring him down, you know? That's why if they do that during those times of Nehemiah, Satan also targets not only the preachers, the ministers, the evangelists, but all the Christians. Why? If the Lord wants to save his children, and Jesus promised that no one can snatch us away from his hands, the devil is trying to snatch as much people as he can to drive them down to the pits of hell. And we rebuke Satan in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, most of the time, Satan is actually trying to use his scheme of power, of money, of deception to the head of the church. Why? Because if the head of the church who has 800 believers that goes to that church, right now we have a lot of mega church that they have millions of followers. If they deceive this leader, what will happen to the flock? They will all be scattered. Because if Satan will change and fix, you know, reroute these leaders, they will be teaching something that is from the words of God, but then suddenly it will have a, a twist to deceive the flock that are following them. And so brothers and sisters, you have to be careful and watch and observe the preachers that you listen to. And you won't believe brothers and sisters, I, uh, I actually attended this uh, church service. It's an international group. And oh my goodness, they're all ministers and they're all young. Would You won't believe that. They're all young, but all they do is just study the words of God. They're composed of girls, male and female. They're very refined, godly people. And then when they have the church service, oh my goodness, the conversations are all coming from the words of God. And then the response will be another words of God. And they will sing hymns with all the musical instrument. Oh my goodness, you will really feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so brothers and sisters, if you doubt the church that you go to, when the Lord showed me about the last church that I went to, that he won't listen what the Lord was telling me to tell him I guess we went out of the church and then what we do we went to we stayed in the house we waited for another church to go to we listen and choose and pick uh, you know the TV church that we can listen and then most of the time you know and lately now we haven't done it because everybody was busy but we should we usually gather together and we read, you know, paragraphs from the Bible. One after the other, we pass it until we were done. And then we pray together and pray for other people. And I guess the church is the building that we're thinking of, which is not. We are the church of God. Okay, we are the church of Christ, I mean. So therefore, if you, can, if you don't trust the churches that allows gay marriages, that allows dancing, that are burying bodies, 
Get out there, brothers and sisters. You don't want to be a part of who they're serving because they're no longer serving God Almighty. So get out there. So Satan uses deception and plausible sounding appeals by his intent to destroy people and churches. So that's why Nehemiah was being encouraged to go because they want to destroy him. So in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, For the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and security, destruction will come upon them suddenly. Like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. And that's what's going on right now, brothers and sisters. We are actually getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. That's why wars and uh, tribulations and everything are actually uh, happening right now. And it's going to come into pass. So many pastors and Christians are lured by Satan's trap. That's why a lot of them are compromising their sound doctrine for the sake of unity. And that's why now the Pope is uniting all the religion. Why is he uniting religion that the Muslims don't believe in Jesus and Buddhists don't believe in Jesus? They have gods with so many heads and so many arms. So why will you unite different gods and worship God Almighty? Remember, God said he is a jealous God. He said, worship him only. And he said in the commandments, I am the Lord thy God. There should, there should be no other gods beside me. Sayeth the Lord God Almighty, the great I am. So therefore, if he is God who told us that these are the things you're supposed to follow, then why will you put the abomination of those people who don't believe in Jesus? Why will you bring them? You can encourage them to believe in God Almighty. But don't bring their God to be united with your God. Because you can serve two masters at the same time. The Lord clearly stated that. So Satan relentlessly persisted in his scheme. So be careful. When Satan approached people once, twice, he won't stop. And that's what they did to Nehemiah. They go come and visit them to entice him. The Nehemiah said, no, I'm busy doing his thing. And then they come back and they come back. So when the devil attack you in your personal life and family life, whatever it is, always be on your guard. And that's why the Lord said, put your full armor of God to be careful and watchful of what's going on around. And when people fight you, brothers and sisters, just sing praises to the Lord and pray loudly or secretly in your heart so he can depart from you. So Satan also spreads slanderous false rumors against people of God. Remember what people are doing right now? They're actually telling the Christians to be haters because we don't like this, we don't like that. They're putting the Christians down. Why? Because the Lord said, in the last days, you will be persecuted. You will be brought into court and you will be persecuted and be killed in the name of Jesus. But that point of time, your faith will be tested and you will be choosing who you wanted to serve. But the Lord said, he promised this. When you will be persecuted, don't worry about what you're going to say because it's the Holy Spirit who's going to speak through you. So all you have to do is continually put in your mind, heart, and soul that even you walk into the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because Jesus is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. We always have to remember that. So, and the Lord also said in Psalm 91, you can trample against a lion and the cobra. You can tread upon them. So, he gave us that authority and that power in Jesus' name. Amen.
So that's why I wash my hands with water because I'm cleansing myself in the name of Jesus because he is the one his blood will cover us and protect us and continually cleanse us and just like what he promised his fountain of living water will be flowing in us and so the earthquake strong wind tornado with fire which is soon going to happen the Lord's been showing it to me in several dreams right now. There will be more earthquake. There will be more tornado. There will be another tsunami. And there will be tornado and fire. But the Lord said, whatever shaking that's going to happen, have faith. Because the Lord is with us. And so, he promised that in Matthew 17, verse 20, which is also the same in Mark 11, verse 23, the Lord said, For truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. Praise be to God. And that is really true, brothers and sisters. In Psalm 91, verse 9 to 12, the Lord said, If you say the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to watch you in all your ways. So, brothers and sisters, God bless each and every one. In Jesus Yeshua's name, Amen and amen. I'm just doing this before it ends. Use the gift of the Holy Spirit. Use the gift of Jesus Christ given to you. And we have to use that so we can gather the children of God because Jesus is with us. God bless you. God bless your family. In Jesus' Yeshua's name. Amen and amen.